Yes, you guys, welcome back. Of course, throughout the news, we've seen two big stories constantly resurfacing. Sergio Aguero, Erling Haaland, and due to our game this Saturday, had to bring on the perfect guest to discuss these two big stories. Of course, you guys, I'm joined by the very special Asim Company. How are you doing today, man? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Uh, we've just been chatting, putting the world to rise for an hour before recording this as well, so I'm all <laughs> ready to go for this, man. Like, yeah. uh, we got chatting for ages, everyone. It was good fun as well, actually. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this game, man. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be interesting as well. And of course, the, the transfer news is pretty exciting as well. There's loads and loads Very to talk exciting. about, isn't there? So, so much. And I think maybe the best place to start now would be with Sergio Aguero. Now, as a City fan, is this the right time for Aguero to be leaving? Or do you feel like there's a bit more left in him that you hope he could still stay? Even that's not happening. There's always, yeah, there's always a chance there's more left. But even being honest, um, I, I, I was saying, and it was quite controversial take at the time, but I was yeah. saying in the summer that I felt we needed a new striker. And this is the start of last season. Because um, Aguero was always injury prone, always injury prone. Yeah. He always had a little bit of time off. And when he got that meniscus knee injury, which was back in March 2020 now, around, <laughs> around that time, um, that's the one that's famously bad and a lot of people were saying like this could take an awful long time to recover from and i was starting to have my doubts anyway but then it was like oh it'll be involved in the champions league games and when, it, when we get there more injuries and more injuries and when it got to around like july august I thought, do you know what? I, I don't think he's going to be playing regularly this season i feel like finally um this, this is an injury that famously recurs and when you've got someone like Aguero who has an injury record that unfortunately lets him down. Yeah. I felt like the right was kind of on the wall. I know that sounds incredibly negative, but sometimes you can just see it and you can sense yeah. it. And I guess in hindsight, it wasn't really a bad take, but the problem with Aguero's at this season is that um, more than his injuries as well, when he has got back into the team, he looks like a man who doesn't really belong anymore. And that sounds awful. It sounds awful, but more because the, the team's had to adapt system-wise to playing without a clinical striker. And because they've gone to this false nine, this fluid kind of front line, yeah. Aguero, it's really it's so painful because he's one of the greatest players of all time, not just from Manchester City, but in the Premier League. But it's been painful to watch him essentially lumber about the pitch, looking a little bit lost. And and yeah. then he lets him down again. And it, it, it's just felt difficult. Like we went over a year without an Aguero goal, which is just, like I can't even imagine yeah. that it doesn't feel normal. And, and to be honest, um, I, I don't think Manchester City get many things wrong. Um, and if they're saying to Aguero, you, you can stay, but you are going to be a backup if you want to. And if they're not offering him a new contract aggressively, then they probably know a thing or two as well because yeah. one thing football fans forget as well is that we, we don't see training you know we don't see yeah. it and yeah. they, they, they're viewing football um, through a different level of perspective than us so if they're looking at him in training and then knowing what Aguero means to Manchester City and they're still taking the difficult decision to not really you know extend his contract early then I think that says everything and uh, I think unfortunately his time at Manchester City is, is, is rightfully up because sometimes you just got to move on and I love him to bits and I'm going to be devastated when he goes And but I think I made my peace with it a long time ago because yeah. it felt Ryan was on the wall yeah I think um, yeah, that's a very fair take uh, I, I don't know I've always kind of felt like to uh, Pep Guardiola ideally if he could sign his dream uh, striker to complete the system I don't know if that would be Aguero I think may have more of like a false nine uh striker and role suits his, his style of football more than having an all and out, out and out striker like Aguero up front but um you know I think that is one thing too that we always forget as well as fans is that depending on the system you, you either see a player shine or obviously lose a light a little bit and it does feel now with the transition that you guys made this season I feel like maybe this spells that you know Aguero's time had to be up so of course all the reports are saying that we are one of the clubs showing a lot of interest in signing him of course Aguero uh, ideally if he could he'd like to stay in the Premier League and you'd imagine if you're a guy like him you know multi-millionaire one of the best strikers in the in the Premier League you know fourth all-time leading goal scorer and one of the biggest YouTube uh, channels right now as well that you know <laughs> Convert into London, what? staying here. Yeah, I mean that, that's still crazy to me that Aguero is like a nerd like us. Like, I never would have thought that to be honest. You know, he's, he's, he he's spends more time, time on Twitch, so yeah, yeah more time so on Twitch, crazy. unfortunately. Which is, but yeah. like you're, you're right. Um, I, I like to be honest. I, as much as his assistant thing, I also think he's just fortunately he's never fit. Like yeah. he got back in, even now he's out injured again, and he's not even played any football. So it's like it's just. Like, Aguero's always needed five six games as well post injuries to get going. Always yeah. needed that, but um. 
it feels like every time he gets well, he gets anywhere near that game time, even a couple of games, he's injured again. So um, that is his problem for me. And like some players, you know, they can play to a 40 because they're physical freaks. You're looking at Zlatan and Ronaldo and whatever, and those kind yeah. of players. But some players, um, they just aren't that. Some players, their body starts to shut down a little bit earlier. And to be honest, even this is probably nothing, but Aguero is really beefed up. Like he's become massive. And like, I could just, it's just my opinion but suddenly becoming much stronger and much heavier set up top when you've yeah. got a knee injury I, I, it feels like if anything that's kind of his body's got to, uh, probably got to adapt to that as well so it, yeah. it felt like a bit of a naive thing to do for me so i always felt like that can't help surely being strong like much bigger up top when you, your knee's not very good at twisting anyway like maybe i'm wrong there but i, I, yeah, I feel like it's like it's um, for thought yeah, I feel like basically, I know obviously Chelsea, you, you, I don't want to be negative because you're linked to him and that kind of stuff, but I just don't you, think you he's... You've got the honest take, the honest take from a Man City fan, so... You... I, and City, I still get City fans giving me grief over this and like, I've got nothing to gain from saying Aguero isn't what he used to be because he's going now and I, I, I but I, I, you just see it sometimes, you just see it and like, you yeah. see players who can, unfortunately, their confidence and their form could drop off a cliff because injuries catch up to them and it becomes a slow procession until they realise actually they're not really cut out for it anymore and maybe Aguero comes to you and maybe, you know, um, maybe he does better at Manchester uh, at Chelsea than he does in this season at uh, Chelsea but, I mean, the big hit for me, just can he stay fit? You can never be upset about signing Aguero, put it that way, you know, like, you, you can't be because he's Aguero but is he your solution? I wouldn't say he's a solution. Maybe he's a short-term one, but I wouldn't say he's going to solve any problems for you because um, I'd be surprised if you sign him, if I'm being honest. I, yeah. I feel like I look at him and go, probably not. I think it'll be very interesting yeah, yeah. to see how the uh, transfer does play out, but I think this follows in very nicely into the discussion over the next target. Of course, we could probably discuss too. Lukaku, Erling Haaland. Uh, no surprise to me that, you know, us... You know, two clubs that play a similar style of football are now competing for the same types of players in the market so that'd be a very interesting battle to, to see and um, you know just discussing Erling Haaland as a Man City fan do you feel like now Goro has gone this is the perfect ideal um, signing to make and you know just give us some of your perspective and your take on his performances versus you guys over the two legs yeah um, firstly uh <laughs> I, I think it's a positive that City shut out Haaland because, like, you know, like, they'll be obviously it's positive because we won the game, but I guess more from the sense, like, you'll be like, God, these guys are good, you know, like, the only Champions League side he hasn't scored against. And he, he I, I can imagine if I was saying, I'd quite like to play with this side. I'd quite like to play with Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden. I would quite yeah. like to play with Bernardo. I'd quite like to be ahead of a defense like John Stones and Diaz and, all, and Cancelo and all that kind of stuff. And it must be, obviously, it was tough for him on the night, um, but it must be nice. Uh, if this is an option, knowing that the side he could potentially go to is goddamn good at football, man. They're really, really good. And like, um, one thing I will say is that it was difficult for him to get involved. Um, it's still crucial involvement in the first leg. Uh, he set up Mark, uh, Royce's goal, you know, a really nice pass as well. Um, uh, one thing as well, he showed you that he's human. He did miss a sitter, yeah. against, not a sitter, a one-on-one -one against Man City, which is one thing that fans of both our clubs need to remember. As good as these players are, they are not their YouTube comps. They are not uh, yeah, perfect yeah. machines. They are not Twitter comps. Like they still miss chances, and like, uh, and that was a nice reminder for Man City fans in particular that if Harlan comes, he's still going to miss a chance and still drive people mad every now and then because he's still only human and he's still only a very still young only player. twenty years old. I think we forget that as exactly. well. You know, I think ever since uh, you know Ronaldo and Messi really exploded, I think that really redefined how young players as a scene when you know they're still adding to their game they're still mastering parts of their game you're not going to see their full level until yeah. maybe mid 20s well, Ronaldo was actually about 23 when he had his breakout season at Man United so even yeah. then like he was a little bit like Messi was Ballon d'Or at 1920 but Messi's a yeah, freak man yeah. it's like, I mean, that's a like, yeah once in a generation yeah yeah but I guess what back to like Haaland with Manchester City it, it, it's perfect it's just perfect because he quite literally I'm not, I'm not saying he's a dyed-in-the-wall Manchester City fan and goes to every game, but he is a supporter of Manchester City. He he quite literally, there's about 20 photos in going around line wearing Man City shirts. His dad captained Manchester City at one yeah. point. He was in Norwegian Manchester City supporters group on Facebook until you have to leave because everyone's harassing him. Um, he was um, at a game a few years back that I was at. I didn't even yeah. know it was, um, Oh, really? You know, like, what it, game? Yeah, like, it was um, a final in the Champions League. Like someone shared, sent me a DM because of Twitter saying, "Look, he, he, someone was interviewing his dad, and Harlan was stood behind when he was like 17 on his phone, and no he only said it because he was just walking past in the background, like in the <laughs> 
but he was there as a yeah. no one then. Play, he was just broke through Mulder then. Um, but he was there watching the game uh, with his dad at Man City. So Haaland has that obvious strong connection with Manchester yeah. City. Yeah. And it's, it's undeniably a factor. Haaland, this, this, Haaland grew up um, watching Manchester City, watching Aguero. And obviously, I guess if you've got a vague inclination of Manchester City, which he clearly does, and let's be honest as well, Manchester City are currently the best team in England. That's not really controversial either, unfortunately. Sorry, mate. But it's just, it's that's the case. And yeah. we have resources to pay as good as anyone else. And we've got the best playmaker in world football in Kevin De Bruyne. Possibly the other wonder kid alongside him in Phil Foden. Uh, a team that's famously... Um, uh, and I would say famously, because obviously Manchester City fan, I feel this way, famously wasteful in front of goal. That is all Achilles here. Yeah. We are still wasteful in front of goal. So when you've got all those added together, you've got a team full of superstars, managed by potentially the best team uh, coach in world football, um, crying out for a replacement for an iconic player in Sergio Aguero. So you've got that. So your ego is like, I get to replace Aguero and be the man everyone loves. For a team that you feel attached to already for sentimentality reasons, your dad actually played for, that can afford you, that has the best creators in world football, arguably at the moment it just makes so much so sense you, that you feel you, you don't feel you're sounding extremely confident that you, you feel there's a well, massive opportunity it, for City to well, it doesn't mean that will happen because yeah. I feel I'm not sure if City will pay the money but I think if City paid the money um, I I I, I think we'd be in this top couple easily. I think I think we'd be ahead of Chelsea. I think we would be because there's an emotional connection and it's more of a guarantee of trophies. That's just a matter of fact at the moment. I think, you know, I, like, I, think I, I think for that that comment in particular, we'll find out more as the season comes to its end. But I don't know. I think with us as well, you know, you can't forget. You know, 20 years old, so you've got a city like London. Uh, London is a selling point. It's a selling feature in itself, and even you see the projects being built. We have some of the best under 23 players across Europe. We have a manager, Young, who's been yeah. there. One thing, this plays a progressive style of football that would definitely suit how he plays as well. And of course, you've got confidence of Roman as well. And if he says that he wants him, believes in you, there's a big opportunity, big chance that he's going to sign his man and, and give yeah. you the things that you want to come. So I think Horland definitely, um, it not surprised me why you know his dad's were older, uh, taking these meetings very seriously, you know, really holding, you know, deep talks with every interested party because there's only a handful of clubs, us, um, you know, Barca, uh, Madrid, maybe Man United that have the money to finance yeah. a deal like this. So, you know, of course, it'll get interesting because money ultimately won't be the key thing that decides where Holland's going to, you know, sign to. It is going to come down to what can be offered, the ambition. And I think, for me, I've always seen it like this. If this season we can get some silverware, which I think we can, I think have seen how we play now tactically the structure um but, but a lot stronger i think when you guys play you're on right, saturday actually. you're gonna you could, yeah it's gonna be very Champions different League final and you could be in FA Cup final very soon yeah. and also that's like and i think it's an amazing world. selling feature like uh when we signed hazard, hazard. Yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. you got hazard from signing uh, and, and we had a team that was in a much worse place than the team we have right now and we were still able to get that so i do think that you know things like that go a, a long way also. exactly they go a very long way in um you know persuading these players to sign for you and really letting them feel that confidence in you that yeah you know this is the right club to sign for it and come to so i don't know i think holding is very interesting but i don't know at the same time the money for this deal i'm not only is it going to be the the transfer fee the wages the asian fees i mean god i, I think his dad wants fees as well it's going to be absolutely crazy and I guess you're thinking there's another guy in the market called romanu lukaku for me i feel like these two are like identical like star wise and play wise but we'll talk about Lukaku another time but um I don't know I don't know I feel like I, like, I rate Hall him by the way I rate him I, 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 I think he's brilliant I, I, I think he's proved yeah. so much I don't understand why the hate he used to get beforehand it was actually actually crazy I remember Chelsea fans when he first came and he missed that penalty against um uh Bayern Munich in the in the European Super Cup final uh this guy was like 18 years old at the time yeah, and for me, that was like one of the biggest disgraces that we didn't really put an arm around him, make him feel better, get his confidence up. He made the exact right decision at the time to leave us to, uh, you know, get the game time, yeah, yeah. players, football, you know, working under Martinez at Everton, then going to United, which um, it should have worked, but then for some reason, the, the tactics just didn't, they wanted to use him as like a lone target man, like he's he dropper. Did, um, yeah, he's not he, dropper. He said himself, yeah. he, he put on an awful lot of weight at United, and he said yeah. that as well. He came out and he, he's, he's, he lost like. 
about like about a stone basically as soon as he signed for Inter Milan and got a lot he, they, he said that he had a nutrition issue which helped him or yeah. something like that but either way he, he I've seen the photos and he, he did undeniably bulk up a lot of United he looked um he lost a lot of mobility but to be honest United were a, a poison chalice at that point anyway Terrible. like everything they yeah. turned to you know uh, turned to garbage unfortunately like they were such a negative club to be at obviously United are a little bit better now in terms of the confidence around them but um, it was the wrong place um, at, the, at the wrong time you know for, for Lukaku at United and like Lukaku right now if City got him I would take quite a lot of enjoyment watching him score an awful lot of goals yeah. from Manchester City and rubbing it in our rival's face but I, I mean they're, they're both quality strikers they're both absolute quality strikers and if either of get them it's a massive 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 boost yeah, for our team I, I feel like we've had a really you know, insightful talk about uh, some of the strikers that, you know, we're all showing interesting that we could be yeah. uh, signing for this summer. And um, yeah, you know, I feel like this is probably the perfect time to, to wrap things up and keep things moving. So of course you guys, make sure you guys follow SC and Company. You'll find all the links in the description. So make sure you follow them on Twitter. Check out the YouTube video too. I'm going to be featuring in this match preview for the FA Cup game. So stay tuned for that. I'm EFC, this is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Peace.